We are Maria and Nicole. We're two secular homeschooling moms that have been been there, there, done that. that. Welcome to episode nine, Schedules, Routines, and Rhythms. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between schedules, routines, and rhythms and how you organize your day. We're also going to be talking about different planning methods. And as usual, we want to stress that our podcast is an inclusive space for your everyday parents that are looking for education options. We are not here to convince you to homeschool. Uh, We want to stress that you need to do what works for your child and for your family. Every family is different. Absolutely. And you know your children best. So uh, feel free to take what advice or information you get from here that works for you and chuck the rest. Hey, Maria, how's it going today? Hey, good morning, Nicole. I'm a little over-caffeinated today. Oh, oh no. (laughs) How does that happen? I usually reheat my coffee if I have extra from the day before and my microwave went out. (gasps) No. So I had to make a whole pot. So here I am. Oh, my gosh. I hate when that happens. Like an appliance breaking can totally throw off your whole day. It did because I don't even know how to heat up food. I have to go old school with my pots and pans today. Well, you know, recently I went to make a smoothie and my smoothie maker was not working. And so I was like, no problem. I have a blender. And then that didn't work either. <laughs> like I was just ready to go back to bed. Like <laughs> Sometimes little things like that, kinks in our day can completely throw us off. Oh my goodness. So all the more reason that we should have this topic today about schedules, routines, and rhythms. Right. Because I mean, as soon as you have your day figured out, bam, something <laughs> comes along and totally throws you off. And I actually really love schedules. I like check boxes Mm -hmm. and my kids, uh, sometimes they do. And sometimes I overwhelm them a little bit with that kind of structure. But children do thrive with predictable routines. And it often helps them to develop self discipline. They like to know what happens next. It gives them a sense of security. Sure. Um, But there's no reason that structure has to be oppressive. You know, routines make our lives easier. It does. And there are no two homeschool days that are ever going to look the same. No. No, they're gonna, well, sometimes your microwave completely goes it out. It does. And you end up with an over caffeinated mother. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, set yourself up for success by choosing, you know, the kind of method that's going to work best for you and your family and just continue to be flexible and reevaluate things over time. Because what works for like a certain season of life may not later, what works for one kid might not work for the next one either. Right. So it needs to be constantly evolving. Right. And And right now I have older kids. When they were little, our days were completely different. And in those middle years, completely different. What's the difference between schedules, routines, and rhythms? Well, schedules will imply a more rigid system for a lot of people. It usually has a structured start and end time. And sometimes that is adhering to a standard of 180 day school year or to 18 week semesters for 36 weeks, which a lot of schools will subscribe to. A lot of newer homeschool parents get really ambitious with these kind of rigid routines and schedules. Often they schedule every hour by the hour, (laughs) which can often backfire and it's hard to stick to. Oh, for sure. That's why I usually advocate for a routine and a routine has less structure to the day, but gives like a gentle pattern to your day instead. So, you know, perhaps you'll start each day with a read aloud and then move on to math and then other seat work and then you know work one-on-one with a younger child while an older one does some independent work so because a routine doesn't have the rigidity of a strict time-based schedule you don't need to feel like the pressure of like cramming like a like a certain amount of math problems into a set math time slot or you might have the flexibility to continue reading aloud extra like if you're in a really good spot in a book right sometimes those stories we get super involved in and our when we want our kids excited about a story that we're reading So why not just be a little bit flexible and say, hey, let's go ahead and read another chapter. Yeah. And sometimes you give them the choice. You'll put it in their hands and say, hey, do you want to keep reading this instead of do math right now? And they're like, yes. So yeah, that's a lot of fun. So rhythms are even more unstructured and they may take into account all of your daily activities like chores or meal prep, your actual meals, hygiene, rest and bedtimes. 
So if you make a list of everything you do, this is an especially great type of plan to have with, you know, multi-age children, babies, toddlers, preschoolers, high schoolers. And on our website, if you go out there under the show notes of this episode, I have created a homeschool weekly schedule that you can download for helping you to organize your week. So how do I organize my day? Well, that's a good question. So let's talk about what a typical homeschool schedule would look like. So in some states, you're going to have like a requirement for an outlined number of hours for daily homeschooling, um, a certain amount of days that you have to do. We've, we had to do attendance records in other states. And some of us might have like filled this out at the beginning of the year and just done what we wanted anyway. (laughs) But some parents find that they want to stick to it exactly. Some parents find it difficult to stick to that kind of schedule. You know, a typical day in a regular school might be six hours or so, but your typical homeschool day is going to be a lot shorter than that. Um, That one-on-one lesson time, it's quick and you move on. So yeah, you could be done in a couple hours. Um, We also might not do five days of school every week. Uh, We often did four uh, with a co-op day or a field trip day on there or like our hiking day. I would just cram everything into one day. So we did like four school days. Right. And with your attention only directed to your one child, you save so much time than when you're attending to 20 learners in a classroom. Yeah. So to help you overcome the challenges of your weekly daily schedules, you can kind of look at some of these guidances to help you. The first one would to be flexible. We've already mentioned that, but um, learning should be fun. You might need to adjust whenever necessary to fit into your day's need and challenges because every day is going to bring trouble, um, like your microwave might break. And your subject flexibility could include things like changing your starting time you could sometimes interchange your subjects or even delay some subjects. It just depends on the needs of your day because there's going to be all kinds of things that are going to inhibit your schedule. Exactly. And, uh, you know, following like a super rigid schedule is going to bring some frustration at some point or the other. So, right. you know, if you have on your schedule that you're going to do this at 8 a.m., you know, circumstances might change like you all oversleep and the alarms don't go off and you find yourself failing. But instead of like wearing yourself out with schedules, just be more routine minded and follow different patterns. And those can always be adjusted to fit the current circumstance. Right. And I'm a little more type A. I like check boxes and I like schedules. But I have learned over time that that doesn't always work for every one of my family. If you are of that mindset, it's fine to kind of have some sort of an idea of what you want to do during certain times. But you can't push that disappointment onto your kids. You're going to have to kind of learn to relax a little and go with the flow. You may have more than one child homeschooling and you might have somebody who is under age or older or somebody with special needs. So when planning out your schedules and routines, you want to consider every child in your family and help bring them on board smoothly. And we always say everybody in the family has different needs and that some people are more needy at times than other people are. So sometimes you might have to give a lot of time to younger children with the older ones coming second because the younger ones are the ones that need it most that day right and when I was nursing my babies we would wake up and nurse and play and the olders would sometimes make breakfast or and you know when the baby went down for a nap was the perfect time to go ahead and start schooling with the older and yeah um you also need to allow time for unforeseen situations like a microwave (laughs) breaking I we're always busy um every March with St. Patrick's Day because my kids are Irish dancers and uh I don't know if you remember that I break a large appliance every March for whatever reason. I don't know why. I've lost a a double oven, a refrigerator, freezer. Oh, I had a a house flood with a water heater. Were you (laughs) going to talk about the termites? A dishwasher. Oh, yeah, the termites, they come out in April. Um, (laughs) I know that. So you want to plan for that. Um, You also could just have like a kid that's moody on a particular day and slows everything down. Or, oh, (laughs) we wrote down a tree might fall in your backyard. That like is a true life story of mine, like recently. Just big storm here. (laughs) Yep. So, you know, that might be a cause to put a lesson or your whole day on hold. 
So just a reminder that this is a weekly episode. We drop one every Thursday morning just for you. And if you have any additional ideas or comments, come to our Facebook page and you can comment on the episode thread or send us an email at info at btdthomeschool.com. We'd love to hear from you. And our last episode of the year is going to be a Q&A. And we'd love to get some of your questions so that we can answer them on that episode. So send them in. Now getting to the actual schoolwork part of your day, the first thing I would recommend is to make sure that you are prepared. I learned early on that the more organized and prepared that I was, that the better that our days would flow. If I just tried to wing it, it was always a more stressful day and a kind of a recipe for disaster. Sure. And if I was running around looking for papers and pencils or scrap paper or something I jotted an idea on, uh, my kid would just my kids would just lose interest in that time that I'm running around and they would just disappear and all of a sudden I'm having to go find kids and I'm like, <laughs> hey kids, where are you? Yeah. So yeah, so do yourself a favor and spend some time preparing uh, the evening before. And you don't have to spend a lot of time, just maybe 10 minutes looking over what you want to do, kind of what goals you have laid out, um, get your materials gathered and any copies that you might need to make, get them ready. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing worse than gathering everybody up and everybody's there to do a science experiment. And then you realize you don't have like the one ingredient the one like thing. that you need. So um, I like to sit down on Sundays and work on uh, what I call my blueprint for a beautiful week, I, which I copied out of a personal development book that I was reading for <laughs> 75 hard. Um. Um, but <laughs> but I thought it was cool. And I sit there and plan out like what we're doing. And that's uh, not just for schoolwork, for uh, my meal plan for the week, mm-hmm. um, you know, looking at our schedule, figuring out like what nights am I going to need thermos dinners um, and just kind of inserting our household chores and then like any big errands that we might need to squeeze in that week. So um, it just helps to kind of be proactive and, you know, know what you're looking forward to in a week. Right. Next, I would say one of the really important things, especially when your kids are younger, is to try to make it fun. Kids are going to respond better when things are kind of presented in a more fun or game-like way, especially when you're starting your day. Come out, as everybody's ready, everybody's had their breakfast, brush your teeth, and it's like, okay, bam, math. Yeah, that's a little rough. <laughs> so it is, <laughs> you know, create games or even sit down, read a book, those read alouds, try to make it magical in some way, like they are actually looking forward to starting their day. Yeah, we did a, uh, a thing that I had read at one point, because we always had a hard time getting started, you know, that first, mm-hmm. the first point in the morning, uh, everybody was kind of going different ways. Uh, You know, some people needed to eat breakfast for four hours, (laughs) you know, (laughs) how it goes. So one of the things we did was I would gather everybody and let them light a candle. Aww. And it was it was kind of silly, but uh, you know how t- toddlers and small children are. They love fire. And so it was something that everybody would race to do. Everybody wanted a turn. It got us started. Right. You can do other things like having really fancy writing implements for your copy work and yeah. things fuzzy, that you need to do. Fuzzy pencils or, yeah. Yeah, just uh, different kinds of stuff to make it magical. Yeah. It takes the drudgery out of the things that you need to get done. Right. One of my favorite things is to start a day with a read aloud. And sometimes even when they're finishing breakfast, I like to pace when I read to my kids. And I started this habit years ago. Um, they're fidgety sometimes. Sometimes they have a little Lego or Rubik's Cube in their hand or doodling while yeah. I read aloud. And so I found that distracting to me to read, but apparently pacing up and down in my house while I'm doing that wasn't distracting. <laughs> But, you know, I found what worked for us. Yeah, we kept a handicraft basket nearby that had all kinds of different quiet crafts that they could do with their hands. You know, some um, embroidery floss and needles, carving kits, some string games. I mean, honestly... I also had some toys that I would rotate in and out and we'd just kind of bring those out quiet toys like the train set. And, you know, my kids are 2019 and 14, but I guarantee you if I hauled that wooden train set out (laughs) today, everybody would probably take a couple hours to play trains. (laughs) But I could read and read and read then while they did that. So, Right. Well, another thing I find really important is to let them have a say in how their day plays out. You know, we're going to have some sort of a specific idea of what we want to accomplish in that day, academic wise. But really, if you just give your kids a say and maybe even the order and how they do things, they're going to be a lot more cooperative 
and even invested in their learning when they know they've been heard and what they have to say matters and what they have a little bit more control over their life. So to figure out how your routine will go on inside your home each week, you might need to start with what happens outside your home. Yeah. (laughs) So every school year is kind of like playing Tetris in my house. There are things that I just won't budge on. Like, for example, our hike group. For years, every Wednesday morning, we were going to be on that hike trail at 10 a.m. Rain or shine. Yeah, so or mud. (laughs) Yeah, but sometimes, sometimes a mud hike. You never know. (laughs) Or when you fall in the mud and I grab your hand to help you up and I actually and grab your phone out of your take hand a and picture. take your muddy picture I should put that on that was side. yeah that was you were getting me back because that was a really muddy hike <laughs> and like all the kids kept falling and I couldn't help but <laughs> like after I knew that they were not hurt then I would laugh oh, yeah, at there them were a few cri- criers that day I think Cameron <laughs> said it was the worst hike of his life <laughs> We've been back, though. Oh, wait. I think he said it was the worst day of his life. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? It was fun. It was so much fun. It was. But those uh, those regular, yeah, the point is, those regular meetups were, like, necessary for our sanity. Right. <laughs> and, and they're fun memories for the, the kids. Maybe not the mud hike, but the other <laughs> other hikes. And you know, park days we did. Twice those a week. Twice yeah. a week on Tuesdays yeah. and Fridays. So whenever I'm putting my calendar together, I put these, you know, non-negotiable things on my calendar and kind of work our schedule and Tetris it around there. So we have a morning meetup, right, and I'd make sure we do school in the afternoon and vice versa. Yeah, so that was really important. Those regular meetups were not only fun memories for my kids, but they were also my sanity, hanging out with other moms and a friendship is so important for every mom. I would encourage you to reach out and make sure that you're also having your friendships. Yeah, and I, I, we've talked about before that that was kind of our base for like everything we did afterwards too. all the clubs and different groups that we did with our kids like we're all formed out of those early park day right. events. And, and uh, you know, we game those board yeah, game Friday afternoons, all, the, all kinds of different little uh, clubs and events like that. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who think school comes first and might overlook that stuff. But I would say that that is equally, if not more important than your actual day-to-day academics. Right. So so moving along, I think that it's really important that you make sure that you don't always try to do every subject every single day. You should feel free to alternate days or choose an alternative scheduling method. Uh, everything needs to be done, of course. We have all of these ideas of what, what, what need to be done, but they don't always have to be done every single day. Right. And you're also never going to squeeze four hours of schoolwork into four hours. No. Something is going to happen. The washing machine will flood. The dog's going to run out the front door. Somebody decides this is the day for math tears. Right. Well, every day is for math tears. Math but, tears. That's... Um, mm-hmm. You're most likely not going to get it all done. And then you end up frustrated. I'm. Uh, we talked about uh, that you're more type A than me. I am the kind of person sometimes that if I have like a set schedule and we blow it right away then I'm like oh well the whole week's done then right like I'm just gonna have to start fresh on Monday so don't do that to yourself plan that you're gonna get two hours of schoolwork done in four hours time and it's, it definitely will go a lot smoother right. for you'll you that thank way. us you will want to be sure that something gets done each day then make sure to add it on to the natural breaks of your day a natural break kind of like a whether it be a meal or a nap time for a nursing baby, use these set times of things that you know is going to be certain that the important parts of your schedule, like whether you're doing math, memory work, or art, put those during those times. So then you'll be sure to hit them. Move right from your natural break into that subject and soon it's going to be a habit. Yeah. Another thing that might help with your flow is the idea of short lessons. That idea stems from the Charlotte Mason philosophy that your child can focus and learn more if you keep the lessons short and you end them before uh, they get tired, even though they're spending less time on their schoolwork overall. I actually had a friend, this didn't have to do with school, even though they were homeschoolers as well, but they would always uh, leave a party while everybody was having a great time. And we'd always be like, why? Why?" And they're like, because then we left on a good note and everything went well and that will be our memory. Because if you 
don't do that. Right. Then, you know, our memory is that we always leave crying or screaming at the end. So, Smart. Um, and that can definitely, definitely uh, happen with schoolwork if you just do a little too much. Right. And when my kids struggle with something like math, I just have them do maybe a few problems. Mm-hmm. And then we pop right over to reading a chapter and then maybe run around outside and come right back to math. Yeah. Or for my musician son, I might have him practice several math problems and then go do guitar for 15 minutes and then come right back. That's his little respite. Yeah. And so ironically, the most important part of your schedule is probably the times of day when there's not any school going on at all. So... When sitting to plan out your routine, you know, your little ones, the infant to preschool set, should probably be considered first because this is going to help create a routine that's going to run smoothly for your whole family. You had talked earlier about like what can you do when if you have like a nursing baby, Um, you know, babies want to eat all the time kind of (laughs) through the day. That's a great time to read aloud. I actually kept a book basket next to my nursing spot. You know, we know reading aloud is important for all of your children, even your older children. It was easy to gather everybody. And my my kids eventually learned like, oh, the baby's going to eat right now. All right, we're going to go sit down and do our reading schoolwork right then. And little kids can play on the floor. Everybody can find something to do with their hands. We talked about that. Yeah, forming those habits where you don't always have to even say, we're doing this right now because they're used to that. So as soon as the baby nurses, okay, this is going to happen. And they just kind of naturally, we are creatures of habit and our kids are too. So if you kind of are a little bit more predictable, then they will know what to expect. Yeah. And if you can't read and nurse at the same time, you know, maybe you have a wiggly older baby, maybe you're uh, bottle feeding, you need two hands, you know, pop in an audiobook or have uh, maybe the older sibling read to the younger sibling. This is also maybe a great time for the kids to read to you. So schedule some reading aloud time for, you know, your young emerging readers during that time. Older kids might have some memory work binders or do some poetry read alouds during that time period too right you can also make toddler care and entertainment part of the bigger kids school time Uh, while you work with one the other's required task could be to play with the little brother or sister or make them a snack or to just see to their needs for an allotted amount of time while you do the other thing Yeah, we actually had um, some cute little books of like um, finger plays, you know, little Mm -hmm. songs that you would do with your hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would have my older ones do teach the baby one of those songs. (laughs) Also, we always would talk about filling the toddler's cup. Filling the small child's cup up, especially if you have like the annoying little sister when you have a friend over and, you know, they keep wanting to bother you. I would always say, well, you know, fill her cup first and then she's going to have other stuff to do. She's not going to bother you so much. We said that so much that the little one would be like, yes, you haven't filled my cup. My cup is empty. (laughs) You need to pay attention to me. But yeah, put them first. Uh, You know, do the story time, do the fun activities with the little ones first, and then gradually they're going to move on uh, to the things that they want to do. And then you have time to concentrate on your bigger ones. Right. I would suggest for you to make sure that any of the subjects that are going to be consuming of mom's time the most just save them for nap time you're just going to frustrate yourself and everyone in your home if you're trying to manage everything at once so put the higher need children ahead take care of them and then you know whatever schedule that they have whether they take a nap or what have you and then start working with some of those more mom heavy subjects even for small children who no longer nap scheduling a mandatory rest time can work Yep, my sister-in-law always did a mandatory rest time after lunch. And after her kids didn't nap anymore, uh, she'd put a movie on for everybody. And that was always a couple hours in her home that was completely peaceful. I loved it. You know, my nap time is super important to me to this day. Oh, I do. My kids from early on, they knew, and I don't need long. I only need maybe five, ten minutes just laying there for nobody talking to me. And my kids learned really young, like, don't mess with mom during this time unless you're bleeding (laughs) Or, yeah. Yes. (laughs) Happy mom, happy family. So, you know, also follow your natural uh, inclinations. Uh, Not all of us jump out of bed running in the morning. You do. I do. But but so, you know, if you don't, uh, then resist scheduling an early start to your day. Like, enjoy the flexibility of homeschooling and work at the times of day where you're going to be at your peak. 
4 a.m. for me. Yeah, peak productivity, not for me. Um, so sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes that means we would do more more of our work in the afternoon instead of in the morning. That is taking into consideration your child's natural schedule. We all have variations. They may not match. So uh, you might have an early riser, uh, and then you might have one that sleeps in later. So schedule the early risers independent work first right. and get that done before the other ones even get up. That's why one of the reasons homeschooling is so fabulous is that we don't have to stick to a rigid eight to three school schedule. You can do it what works for your family. And as you know, I'm a super early riser. I'll get up four or five a.m., but I'm a single mom, and so often I'll work on the computer and I'll get four or five hours of work done before the kids even wake up. So that's important for me to earn a living, but also, you know, I follow their natural rhythms. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try to change your life and adapt it around your schedule. That's a prescription for disaster. So do what works for you. There's no rules. Right. And if you do allow your child to sleep in and possibly do afternoon or evening school, you may see that they're actually more alert and function better they may be a completely different student. Sometimes our ideas of what they're supposed to be doing may not completely align with who they are and how they work. So there's no law that says you have to start school at 8 a.m. In fact, there's no law that says you have to even do school Monday through Friday. Figure out what works for your family and don't go against the grain. And we will include some of the links and ideas and everything that we're talking about on our show notes on our website. So be sure to check that out after you listen. We would love it if you would take a second to go out there and like and rate us. Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We are on all those streaming platforms. So go out and check us out. Give us a thumbs up. Okay, we've talked about routines, schedules, and rhythms, and I wanted to touch a little bit on traditions because there's a lot of annual traditions that we have incorporated into our school, and it's been really important for my kids. They look forward to things every year. Mm -hmm. For example, I have one that has a birthday every year during finals, and so we prepare for that, and so we make sure that that day we take off school every single year. Yay. So I don't know how it's going to work while she's in college, but (laughs) yeah, every year we do the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, uh, your hike group, we do a hike and hike. hike. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun this year. We had a great time. Yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, we have a lot of the older kids that have graduated and moved on, come back for pie hike. Uh, Some of our kids that have gone, uh, gone on to school, come back, everybody comes out for pie hike. Everybody brings the partners and (laughs) All of that. So it's a fun time. Yeah, Every year on St. Patrick's Day, we do in-house St. Patrick's Day hunt. The kids wake up and I buy usually Rolos or something gold foil wrapped and oh, like I'd, a leprechaun, like a leprechaun <laughs> hunt kind a of thing. Leprechaun yeah. hunt. I, you take green construction paper and I cut shamrocks and put clues and um, that's fun. Yeah, that's, that's always fun. On MLK Day every year. I put on I have a dream we usually do like project of some sort and every year I cry every year I say I'm not going to cry and every year I'm bawling by the time his speech is yeah. over a lot of people use that as a uh, homeschooler or not I uh, use that as a day of service so there's always events and things that you can find online to do on Martin Luther King Day as well right uh, our dog's birthday we've always had a annual event dog party and buy dog ice cream Oh my gosh, I'm not going to let my dogs listen to this podcast because they're going to be like, where's our bone cake? Kirby and Maureen are missing They out. don't even, I know, every year we're like, hey, we forgot that the dog had a birthday like a month ago. They don't even know when their birthdays no, are? No, we always forget. Oh, Oh. Listen, it's every day's a dog birthday at my house. Oh, I'm I'm coming <laughs> over. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell them. <laughs> uh, oh, every year we do. Well, we haven't since COVID, and our kids have gotten a little older. But every year before, we did the cardboard boat regatta. Oh, so much fun! Yeah, so, and that was yeah, a lot. Of, in the uh, early part of the summer, the kids would plan out their cardboard boat with duct tape, and they would climb on board. And well, actually, um, your daughter Jillian, my 
my kid is lifting Jillian up into one of the boats on our TikTok. Oh, our, yeah. Our, our it's one and only so TikTok. Funny. Hopefully by the time this airs, we'll have another one. Right. Maybe <laughs> I'm learning. That's my tradition to learn how to do a TikTok. Um, <laughs> but, and there's also, you know, your town might have uh, homeschool days various times of the year. So often we'll, you know, do those with friends. Um, and there's a few we'll never do again because they're really busy. Oh, my gosh. But, the zoo. <laughs> yeah, don't never. do that. Again. Yeah, but there's a lot of other places that do, and that's great, especially if it's a museum or something that might be hosting an event on a, uh, a school day. And so you kind of have the place to yourselves. We love those. Right. Okay, so w- moving right along, we wanted to mention some of the different planning methods. Now that my kids are a little older, I have really enjoyed using block scheduling for my teenagers. It's a really efficient way for them to get a lot of work done in less time. You ultra focus on like 15 to 30 minute blocks and then take a break instead of sitting there zoning out after about 40, 45 minutes on the same subject. It just isn't very productive in our house. Maybe it is for other people. It doesn't work for us. So there's that. Yeah, block and loop scheduling are both really popular uh, homeschool scheduling methods. Loop scheduling doesn't really assign a particular subject to a certain day, but you might have a list of the things you want to do during a certain time period. And then when it's time to work, you just move on to the next thing on the list. So like, say, you know, you're going to work for two hours today, and you've got four subjects you want to get to, but you only get to like three, three and a half, then that next day you start you pick right back up with that half and then you move on to the the next thing on the list. So it's nice because it it means that you if you do have to take a day off for like an emergency car repair or something, it's not going to derail you because you just pick up with the next thing. I kind of loop schedule like my whole year like that. Like right. I don't follow a particular uh, year thing. We move on to the next level of whatever we're doing when we finish one. So I don't think I've ever somebody was just asking that on a page today like what if I can't start my school year on September 1st or whatever it was like oh I don't think I've ever started at the beginning of the year on things one of our favorite things to do on the first day of school oh going back to that I just want to touch on that on traditions I didn't say anything about that our first day of school is always a huge hit in our family Uh, we've done a few things but every year we always do a first day photo and we do a little questionnaire and I've created one for the been there done that homeschool podcast uh, listeners that you'll be able to download on this uh, episode show notes and it's it's a cute little simple first day of school and my kids fill them out it doesn't take very long and even younger kids can write them out and then I show them all of a sudden I show them all of the previous years and they are just always amazed every year about how much they've grown and something like oh my gosh I used to watch Pokemon because (laughs) one of the questions is what's your favorite show (laughs) on there and then it just really shows them real time like their growth because what they've changed about themselves it's, it's shocking sometimes to see even for me how much they've changed in just 12 months so I always do that I always do a first day of the year little questionnaire it's kind of a similar thing but with the resolutions and reflections on the previous year so two times a year we do this and same thing I show them so I will have those available for you to download if you want to start your year with that it's always fun and if you haven't done it and you have an older kid start today why not uh it's 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 a lot of fun and so I recommend that that's great Going back to um, some of the different planning methods, and I did a little side note there on that, but uh, work boxes, it's something that both you and I did when the kids were little. It was such a cool, like it was all the rage for a while. And we were just talking about like, where, where's work boxing gone? Right. It was such a fun idea. I love that because just little things, it, it, it could be something like a simple puzzle that's in the back of your closet and you pull it out because it might be relevant to something that you're working on and you just stick it in a work box and then they work on it during a set time so they just go from work box to work box and when they're younger a lot of the work box contents are games or puzzles or things like that some yeah some kind of handcraft work boxing was basically you had like a set of boxes or they could have been folders or shelves I had one of those uh craft boxes and they were nice because they pulled all the way out so you could actually take your whole drawer out and take it to another room if you needed to but so some of the boxes would have like ours had 10 
Um, some of them would have uh, independent work that they could do. In fact, I had our like morning and evening hygiene routine, you know, b- wash your face, brush your teeth. Like they had like five things on those that were in there. And so some of the things were independent work and then some might be work with mom or work with a sibling slot. Mm -hmm. And so they were great. And really five of them were kind of things that they did every day and the other five I would switch out. So at night I would just, I had a master weekly schedule and at night I would just load up the boxes real quick for the next day. And it was just such a a fun, easy way to homeschool. I I had a nursing baby and at the time my younger elementary student would, what do I do now, mom? And right there with me and I'm I'm like, okay, go check your work boxes. And it's almost like a little present they get to open and they just run over there. And so that's a lot of fun for you to be tending to someone else and then allow them to be more independent for something you've prepared. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think that's the end of our episode today, Nicole. All right. I think that went well. I'm excited. We're going to have uh, several things on our website and our show notes to download for helping you organize and structure your day and just remember to totally be flexible next week on episode 10 we're going to talk about whether or not your high schooler can get a diploma (laughs) we're going to talk about uh, teaching some of those higher level classes and can your homeschooler go to college we're going to be talking about that and more next episode and hopefully you will have a reasonable amount of coffee (laughs) <laughs> exactly I and a fixed so. microwave <laughs> don't forget at the end of our year we're going to be doing a special episode where we're going to be answering all the questions that you're sending into us we have a lot of things already so if you have anything that you want us to talk about or address please send them in info at btdthomeschool.com bye cheers Be sure to check us out on our website at btdthomeschool.com, as in been there, done that, btdthomeschool.com. You can join our mailing list and get news and updates on future podcasts. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at the BTDT Been There, Done That Homeschool Podcast.